Macau, often dubbed as the Las Vegas of the East, a blend of Portuguese and Chinese culture, renowned for its vibrant casinos, rich history and amazing fusion cuisine. From the iconic ruins of St. Paul's to the glittering lights of Cotai Strip, Macau is a destination where East meets West. Are we in Rome? Are we in London? Are we in Vegas? Are we in Paris? Or are we in Venice? No, no this, this is, is Macau. Macau. Alright guys, so we are now at the port terminal and we've just gone through immigration. It's very quick and easy and now we're going to start boarding the boat. Our boat is Turbo Jet. But anyway, I can't wait. Let's go. To get to Macau, we opted to book a one hour ferry from Hong Kong. We booked via Gluck, you can use our code for some discount. So guys, if you didn't know, Macau is actually a very interesting city and it's a combination of Chinese and Western culture. And our first stop today is Fisherman's Wharf, which is also known as Rome. All right, so we've never actually been to Italy, so we haven't got the real thing to compare it to, but it does look kind of real, to be fair. Mm. I think the closer you get, the more you can tell that it's not real, but from afar, it does look good. So I'd say Fisherman's Wharf is definitely like a picture-taking spot. Mm. There's not too much to do here, but there is like a big entertainment complex behind, which has loads of restaurants and things, although they don't seem to open until after lunch. Yes. There's also a waterfront hotel and a casino here, guys. Yeah, make sure to put this on your list. So I just went to the shop to buy a drink and I found out that they accepted my Hong Kong dollars, but they actually have their own currency. So it actually looks quite cool. It's got Macau written on it. Um, but yeah, I also got given one Hong Kong 20 as well. So I think they use both here. But yeah, just bear in mind that they do actually have their own currency, but you are fine to still use your Hong Kong dollars. They even have their own coins too, look. It says Macau on it. It's actually a really pretty coin. So when you arrive in Macau, you have got several different options to get around. So you can either do a private tour. Lots of people are asking at the port if you want to book that. I think it costs around 500 Hong Kong dollars, but I'm not 100% sure. I just saw it on one of the cards. Um, there's also the option of doing like a hop on hop off bus, which we were looking into actually. Mm. It does look quite good. It's about 20 pounds per person. And the last option, which is what we are going to be doing today is DIY. So we've decided we just want to explore for ourselves. We're just going to figure it all out as we go along. So we're only here in Macau for one day. So we made sure to get up early so that we can leave Macau late at night tonight. Yes. So we have a full like 12 hours or something. So we need to get on the number three bus to get to our next destination. we've made it to the very busy and very popular ruins of St Paul. It's actually really big. It's taller than I thought it was going to be. There's lots of details on there that are very intricate and wow, it's incredible actually. There's also some kind of basketball match going on down the bottom. So there's a lot of music and like uh, microphones going on. I think it's a match or some kind of performance. I don't really know. So the ruins of St. Paul was actually built back in 1602. However, it was actually destroyed by a fire back in 1835. That's why the only ruins left is the front of the church. It was once the church of the mother God. We actually went behind it and there's actually metal stilts that protects the church so that it won't fall. This place is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a very popular landmark here in Macau. That's why it's so busy. And it feels like you don't want to get in other people's way having pictures and that, but you just can't help it. But anyway, guys, this place is actually so beautiful and it's so big. Wow. I wonder what it would look like before the fire when it was destroyed. I bet it was so beautiful. So 
So right in front of the ruins of St Paul is Senado Square, which is a shopping district and a good food spot. All the buildings around here have a very unique architecture. It kind of looks European, which makes sense because Macau was actually Europe's last colony here in Asia. It was a Portuguese outpost for more than 400 years. While Macau was handed back to China in 1999, the past 400 years of Portuguese rule definitely left a mark. Just look at the city's architecture and the food scene. We've seen so many egg tarts, which we cannot wait to try. And just look at all the cobbles down the road. Definitely does have a European vibe to it. Shout out to Kuya here. Mark, Mark, Mark. Kuya Mark. Yeah. So I've got um, some egg roll with seaweed here. Um, they give it to you for free, just a little tasting thing, but let's give it a go. Mm. When you're walking around Sonado Square, there's actually loads of people that offers you food samples, such as egg rolls, um, there's another one, um, some beef jerkies. So almond now, cookie. almond cookies. So now we're just gonna walk around and try and find some beef jerky. So this street is really cool and super unique because you've got the cobblestone streets, you've got these European buildings, but then you've got that Chinese twist with all the Chinese writing, yes. you've got the Chinese lanterns, and it just it just looks really cool to have this like combination, you know? Mm, so cool. to try here in Macau is the pork or beef jerky. I've got the pork jerky here. I've never actually tried jerky before, so um, this is a free sample. Let's give it a go. Mm. Yeah, it feels harder to touch than it does to actually chew. It's quite sweet, actually. It kind of tastes like it's been drizzled in honey. I doubt mm. it has, but mm, it's really sweet. It's is it nice. tender? I don't know. It's kind of chewy, but not horribly so. I like it, actually. I didn't think I'd like it, but I like it. So I've got the beef jerky here. It's quite thick as well. Mm. It's actually quite sweet, quite tender. I thought it would be more crispy. But then again, just look at the cut there. Mm. It really tastes like langonisa or tocino. Like, I'd eat this for breakfast with rice, you know, <laughs> and a fried egg. Mmm. It's so nice. I thought it would be drier. Like, I, I don't know, I just see jerky as like being like dried mm. meat. So I, I was thought, quite surprised that it's like kind of, it isn't dry. Mm. I thought it would be like more crispy, yeah. dry, because it's been left out in the open as well. Yeah, it's quite exactly. Thin. So we've got ourselves an egg tart, which we've seen everywhere around here and is a must try here in Macau, but also in Hong Kong, right? Egg tarts are a big thing in Hong Kong too. Um, so yeah, here's our Portuguese egg tart. Smells kind of almondy. I'm sure it isn't, but it's really warm as well. Let's have a big bite. Oh, insane. We've got really nice sort of puff pastry here. Almost crumbly, very crispy. It's so sweet and the pastry is so flaky and crunchy, it's so nice. This only costed us 10 Hong Kong dollars or Macau dollars, but definitely worth it guys. You need to try this if you're in Macau. Wow. Mm. Mm. <laughs> It's like poppadoms. Bubblegum? It's like poppadoms. Oh, poppadoms. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Isn't it? I don't know what that is. 
apparently another must thing to try here in Macau is a pork bun. So we have gone for one from a place called Tea Plus, weirdly. Um, I think it does a bit of everything, drinks, egg tarts, pork buns, but it's advertised everywhere that apparently the president tried it here. So maybe it's good, who knows? Not sure which president, but let's just go straight in with a big bite. As you can see, it's just the bread and then the meat in the middle. It's got quite a unique seasoning. Like, I've never tasted pork with this flavouring before. And I can't put my finger on what it is. But the bread is like soft on the bottom and hard on the top. It's nice, quite chewy. But yeah, the flavour, I really can't put my finger on it. Whilst you're walking around Tanada Square, you will also come across this amazing, beautiful church here, which is St. Dominic Church. And it is one of the oldest church here in Macau, which was built back in 1587. It is one of the most popular touristy spot here in Macau. So whilst you're already here in Tanada Square, might as well check this out, you know? This beautiful yellow architecture and the details is just insane. So our next stop here in Macau is the Amma Temple, which is one of the World Heritage Site in this area. This temple is literally one of the oldest temple here in Macau, which was built back in 1488. Wow, that is old. We've just checked it out and it's honestly really beautiful. Like you kind of just keep going up more and more steps. Um, it's quite a small little temple, but there's lots to it. There's different incense. There's like writing and mm. Chinese markings in the wall. And then you've got those spinny, I don't know what you'd call them. These almost like spinny incense mm. that like fall from the ceiling that we actually first saw in Hong Kong. They're here as well. And I just think they're really cool. I've not seen that anywhere else. There's also a 400 year old rock right at the top with the big writing on it. Mm. That is mental, 400 years old. I know, and it looks like untouched as well. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's had any damage. I'm not sure if it has over the years, but it did look like it was all in one piece. And yeah, it was just a really nice experience. I just love the smell of all the incense. It just makes you feel so like spiritual. Yeah, yeah and you also get the view of the skyscrapers yes, here true. in Macau. It's very nice. Yeah, I d definitely recommend uh, checking this spot out. You'd probably be done in about 10, 20 mm. minutes. It's just a little stop, but it's really, really nice. And I definitely think you should add it as something to do while here in Macau. So we are currently on our way to the City of Dreams. Like we said earlier, we've been doing DIY today. So we've mostly been walking between stops or getting the bus. Now online, doing research before we came here, we heard that you could use your octopus card that you use in Hong Kong here in Macau. However, for us, we've not found anywhere as of yet that has accepted the octopus card. It doesn't work on the buses. Um, you need to use either cash or Macau have got their own sort of digital card slash app that you can use. A lot of places don't accept card either. Nearly everywhere only wants cash. The buses also, it has to be exact cash. You just kind of pop it in this thing. They don't give any change at all. It seems like all of the bus journeys cost around six Hong Kong dollars wherever you're going per person, which isn't too bad really. Because there's no like set fare for. No, there isn't. It just seems like it's six dollars wherever you go. If you go for like six, seven, eight stops, it's still gonna be six dollars. And like if you go for one stop, it's still six dollars. So. Yeah, that's what I think anyway. Because uh, that's all that we've been charged on every single ride so far. But yeah, we're gonna head towards another bus stop now to get to the City of Dreams, which is kind of a highlight here in Macau as well. So I'm excited to experience it for ourselves and take you guys along with us. So yeah, let's go and check it out all together and see what it's about. So we have made it to the strip here in Kotai, and this is the place where you've got all the different parts of Europe, so you've got the Parisian, the Londoner, the Venetian, and right behind me right now, we've got the Venetian, which is actually a mall, but then we've also got these buildings that look just like Venice, and I think 
Normally, this should be filled with water. I'm not sure why there's no water there. It does kind of make it look not as much like Venice, but I have seen pictures where this is full of water and gondolas, right? Mm. So, not sure why that, maybe there's a drought? I don't know. <laughs> and also guys, in each building, there's a huge casino. They even got some Italian classical music playing in the background, guys. Like, you just know that this place is just so posh. <laughs> There's the Eiffel Tower. Oh, beautiful. Bonjour, Paris. Uh, I need a croissant. So if you're looking for a European getaway here in Asia, then Macau is the place to be. You get to see three European cities, all within walking distance of each other. And well, it's a little taste of Europe, I guess, without having to actually go to Europe. Wow. 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 The Eiffel Tower. Honestly, they've done really well with the details and intricacies. Like, everything looks really big and grand. Like, it's not just the Eiffel Tower. Like, they've thought about everything. Even the trees leading up to it. They've got stairways, buildings behind it, and even things like the windows. And, wow, I can't believe that they've done it, like, so well. So right next to the Parisian is the Studio City, which is just right there. And I think that's the Vegas version of Macau. And I believe inside there's actually a water park. I wish if we had quite a lot of time here in Macau, we would have went to that water park. Right, so? Is it a water park? Yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> I, to be honest, until we started like researching Macau literally last night, I didn't really know that it was like this, you know? I don't know what I thought. I thought it'd be more similar to like what I envisioned mm. China to be like, and it's completely different. Wow, I didn't know it had like so much Western influence. Like, I'm shocked actually. Wow, this place is so fancy. Just look at this hotel reception. It's so big and so grand. I feel like we are out of place here, you know? We're not used to this luxury lifestyle. <laughs> so we have come inside the Parisian Mall and I'm actually shocked at how much it is like Paris from the balconies to the artwork on the ceiling to the decor. Everything is just like in Paris. I actually can't believe it. It's definitely worth coming inside the malls as well as on the outside just to get that true experience. Wow, it really adds to it, you know? I thought, wow, this is nice. And now we've come inside the mall and I'm like, whoa. So the lights have come on, the Eiffel Tower is shining, all of the lights are so, so nice, all the buildings have lit up and it just looks like an insane nighttime sky view. Wow, what a day in Macau it's been. Honestly, it's exceeded my expectations, but it's also been very different to what I thought it was mm. going to be like. I thought as it was only an hour away from Hong Kong, it was going to be quite similar to Hong Kong. Literally nothing like Hong Kong. I also thought, you know, being part of China, what I envisioned China to be like, again, this isn't anything like what I thought it was going to be like. I don't know about you, I thought it's way more Western. And now it makes sense, you know, looking into it, that it's got that like mixture of Chinese and Western. And it's just a really cool place. I definitely think you should come and check it out. A day trip is perfect, honestly. There's so many casinos in Every single hotel, there's a huge casino, guys. No wonder why this place is the Las Vegas of East Asia, because it's a yeah. gambling place. It is, yeah. I wish we had money to gamble. It'd be great to have a, have a go at it. But just to play around. Yeah, it would be amazing. But guys, look, it's just so nice. Stunning. But yeah, last few tips before coming to Macau if you're heading here. Remember that you do not need to get the Macau currency. Some places will say, no, we don't do Hong Kong dollars, but they should accept it. Mm. Like, I, don't, so I think sometimes people are just a little bit funny or maybe they just aren't confident enough in English to just say no, but they should accept Hong Kong dollars nearly everywhere. 
card isn't as well accepted no. as I would have thought. You do need cash here. And Octopus card doesn't work, even though Google says it should work, it really doesn't. And if you did want to get the alternative to the Octopus card, it would be the Macau Pass. And I think you can use that in shops, convenience stores, and the public transport. But anyway, guys, we had such a great time here in Macau, visiting all these amazing World Heritage sites, all the amazing food. But we're going to end the video here, so make sure to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below, press that notification bell on, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Bye.